Good afternoon and welcome to Metro Home Theater Tech Tips. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. And welcome aboard. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah. So Adam, what is today's title? Well, today's title is Rudolph Your Nose. So bright. Whoa, whoa. Is there drinking involved? Because it's eggnog time. No, not. Well, maybe maybe some virgin eggnog or something like that. So just, you know, wow. not, not very. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have, you know, it, it, you will have the taste of the eggnog, you know, the, the snot consistency. And then, you know, and then we'll just stay so sober. Then, if we're not talking about that kind of happiness with a red <laughs> nose, what are we talking about? Well, today we're going to be talking about HDR. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about what is it? Now, Brent, um, I will be perfectly honest with you, uh, as you and I have had our discussion before today's episode, and you can attest to it, um, holy smokes. Um, <laughs> Much more than holy smokes. And it, it, this yeah. is something you and I both thought we had a decent grasp on going into this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no big deal. And fortunately, both of us independently decided... I, better study up on this so I don't look wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I've been dealing with the TV shootouts. I've been dealing with manufacturers, yeah. Sony, LG, with um, Dolby, and thought I had a good handle on this. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole lot going on here in the background that, thank God we studied up on it. Yeah. So, uh, it, and honestly, it's, it's one of those things where, it, like you said, we thought we had a decent understanding of it because you either have HDR or you don't have HDR, you either have Dolby Vision or you don't have Dolby Vision. But when you really start trying to find out, well, what is it and how does it work? There is so much added information in there that makes it extremely difficult to understand. Um, it is a rabbit hole. It, it really is. And, and uh, I, I will say that anybody who is out there that is dealing with uh, HDR that has had maybe some formal training on it, um, uh, God bless you, because that, that must have been like the hardest class you went through during that time, because it is, there is there's a mountain of information. I mean, bigger than Everest, I, I feel like. So um, well, it's funny because, you know, we're going into it, uh, understanding deep color and gamma and luminance. Thought that this would be easy. Look, it's just metadata. Yeah. You know, it's just a little bit of signal going down, no big deal. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in fact, on that note, one of the things that we discussed prior to the show starting days, we're going to make this a two-parter. Yeah, we have to. Uh, to be perfectly honest, um, we uh, literally th five minutes before we, we opened up the episode today, um, we had a meeting of the minds and realized that there is well, so much information. Well, we had a meeting of him and the mindless. Well, there you go. Uh, and w w there's so much information that it would be, it would. It, we need to, since we're trying to get good information out to you out in the field, we need to break this apart and, and have more time to really help understand what is HDR and how does it work. Because truthfully, it's at the point now where as we move into HDMI 2.1 with 8K, with HDR, uh, well, pardon me, HDR 10, HDR or 10 plus, plus Dolby yeah. Vision, and whatever cockamamie other thing that they come up with after that uh, during the HDMI 2.1 uh, you know, world, uh, there will be a lot of information that you all need to understand so that you can go to battle uh, and or you know fully prepared and fully make your armed. customers happy yeah exactly and these two episodes actually lead into several more episodes after the first of the year where we get into deep color gamma and chroma settings yes so actually, before we go too far, I just want to say, everybody, thank you for checking in with us today on today's episode. If you have questions or anything uh, that you want to talk about, make sure you put it over in the chat section over here. Uh, as always, if you were watching this after the fact, you can always put those comments and questions uh, down in the comment section below. We do monitor those and watch those comments. Uh, and thank you for watching today's episode. As always, a, a, a like, a share, and a subscribe, as well as hitting that little bell notification icon is very, very helpful to us. It lets us know that we're doing a good show for you uh, and it's good information that has helped you. Uh, and then as always, Brent, where, what else should they do? Uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, mm -hmm. tell your kids. Yeah. And don't forget, send us cash. Cash is good. Cash is good. Cash is good. Um, no ca if you can't send cash, I'll accept uh, pretty much gift cards from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So Except Google Play. So what I'm going to do here, we'll, we'll, we'll put our, our title card uh, on here. There we go. Rudolph, your nose, so bright. Again, I ask, shouldn't this be about alcohol? Well, if it was Rudolph and your it's, nose being so bright, it could be, you know, it's the holiday that it season would be a, and a certain white powdery substance that, you know. No, no, that just gives it a dusting. Oh, okay. All right. Anyways. I mm. saw that on Miami Vice. Did you? Okay. Yeah. You, you learned, did you? Yeah. Okay. saw it on Miami Vice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vi yeah, Vice. Yeah, of course. 
before you were born. Uh huh. Okay, so um, with that, uh, really the next part of this is that we kind of need to talk about what HDR is not. And so the first part of this that, we, that I want to talk about, and actually the, the cue cards are actually a little off on this. The first thing that, that we're going to see here is actually it's going to say, what is HD, uh, SDR? So really the, the better question is not what is SDR. Better question is, is what is HDR not? Because the history of television, uh, there's a yeah, exactly right. There is a lot of information when it comes to HDR that's misconstrued. Uh, and with the, the first part of it being uh, t uh, 8 bit, 10 bit and 12 bit color depth and how it correlates to HDR. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. This has been the largest hurdle for me to get over to fully understand what's going on. Be because now, there's so because much for me. That one is something I've been dealing with for 10 years with HDMI. Yes. That one's an easy one. Yeah. It's understanding the metadata portions and how that operated, because that's entirely separate from the 8, 10, 12 right. of HDR. They just right. happen to, current, to frequently go along with each other. So when you, and, and let's, let's go ahead and actually talk about what, the, what we mean by this. So with HDR, everyone always says, well, well actually, let's stop there because okay, what you got? let's go with what the header says. Okay. What, what is, is SDR? SDR. All right. What do you got? Because this is literally where we were till five years ago. Yeah. SDR is what we've watched in television our entire life. Right. It wasn't called SDR. Nope. It was called television. Right. And when they developed television, there was a brightness capability that was inherent in the electronics. There's also a brightness range inherent in film. For the photographers, this is called an f-stop. Mm -hmm. Now, how many f-stops are available in a typical SDR broadcast, Adam? Roughly 100 nits. Okay, but how many f-stops? I, I was looking that up. Actually, I don't have that one memorized Because you yet. knew that earlier. I did, I did. Uh, oh, oh, yes, pardon me. You, yes, you are correct. I, uh, it's uh, working off of six f-stops or six, eight? Six to eight f-stops. Six to eight f-stops. So what this means is you have a brightness from, from no brightness to max brightness of about this. We're going to make this as our arbitrary statement. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have seen for 80 years of television. Right. Longer than I've been alive even. Mm -hmm. So it's a long time. And there are certain things that are inherent in televisions. You've got a photon beam hitting the back of phosphors. It's only so bright that that could get. Yep. Then we came out with plasma. It's only so bright that could get. And then LEDs, you know, they tried to cheap out and only put a few LEDs behind the panel or edge lit it. So it's only so bright that could get. And then projection systems. Yeah. So we didn't really worry about getting it brighter because we couldn't. Yeah. So the limitations were not noticed. They yeah. were just a fact of life. Right. And as we started moving forward, as TV manufacturers got better control of the panels with localized dimming capabilities, with brighter LEDs, more power efficient devices, yep. they realized that they could get their TVs brighter. Yes. So now there was actually a, a really good article that we used when we were researching all of this that had a, a breakout of the, the, cor the correlation between what I said nits and what you said f-stops. F-stops. And, um, and actually, that's really important to talk about because with the f-stops, you had a, about six to eight f-stops. And how that correlates from there into the nits, which would be the... Uh, actually, do you know where the, the term nits comes from? I did because Boccaccio beat that into our heads two years ago? Yeah. Ask me if I remember. You don't? No, yeah. no I don't. So it used to be lumens it was or the, candelas. A, a, a nit is the, uh, is the brightness of a, of, a, of a candle made out of whale, f whale blubber uh, with, I think it was like six inches worth of, of uh, uh, whale blubber on it uh, from a certain distance of, uh, away. I'll have to look up the, the exact definition of it. We'll talk about it on, but on the next episode. But that was labeled a nit. That is one nit. At whatever, I think it's like 100 feet or something like that, from that candle, that is one nit. And so that's what they use to say, okay, well, this is 100 nits. So it's the value of 100 of those candles all lined up together to show the brightness of that. And so when you're looking at the, the, the old you know, tube, uh, tube style TVs, when we only had six to eight F-stops to work, uh, that was really what, what, what they were talking about. They had 100 of those candles 
piled up together with that amount of light to work with. And with the resolution and color depth we had at the time, 8-bit, mm -hmm. 385 on a good day, downhill and neutral, right? it was sufficient. Yeah. You know, it's like when, when Star Trek, <laughs> showing my age, when Star Trek came out on television, if you had a color TV, the bright colors of the uniforms yeah. were just completely blew our minds because we hadn't seen anything like that. Yeah. And it was amazing because it was bright, it was light, it was airy. So with, with, when we're talking about SDR, we're, we're really talking about that gamut, that, that, that number of f-stops, right? So we yes. went from zero to six. Now within those f-stops, because we had zero to six. Now, do you know what an f-stop is? For every, I actually just looked it up. For every one step, we're doubling the amount of light. Okay, but do you know how an f-stop works in a camera? So not, in, no, we, we had the episode on cameras, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, I haven't, okay. I haven't saved Simply all of that put, information. Simply put, think about the opening sequence of a James Bond movie. Right. You're looking through a camera lens. Right. And you know those lines that go in? Mm -hmm. That That is an aperture control, and those, the tighter you get it, the lower the f-stop, the less light that comes in. Gotcha. The larger you get it, the more light that's allowed onto the film. There you go. And that's what an f-stop is. So the larger the opening, the more light that can come in. The drawback is the larger the opening, the more time it takes for it to saturate the film correctly. So smaller the opening. Smaller the yes. Yes, smaller Sorry. the opening. No, 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 no. You're you're good. I just want to make sure that, that we're we're both on the same page with that. Um, I, I, again, everybody, thank you for watching the episode. If you have any questions, let us know down over in the questions. And tell section. us how wrong we are. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Point Fuck, we love the, love the question. Uh, he, he's asking, uh, do TVs predate the dinosaurs? Okay, just for what it's worth. <laughs> just for what it's worth, the TVs do predate me. Uh-huh. So the dinosaurs. It very actually predates period, the dinosaurs. Very short period. They must have gotten here on the comet that, that took out the dinosaurs, right? I mean, yes. Okay. They, they, they are an alien invention. You, they you, came you with you the just, comet. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. That's what it is. Um, uh, the experts helped me out with that one. Uh, they said that the amount of light spread, uh, that amount of light spread over a square meter is one nit. So the candle spread over the, 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 the distance of, of, of a square meter uh, is one nit. So, uh, yes, thank you for that very much. That, that's great. And then one candela well, I, I per square I know where that came meter. from. Yeah. So, cool. <laughs> yeah. Huh, okay. Again, there is so much incredible information with this. And, I, again, I, for anybody watching this that wants more information, I highly recommend taking some time and doing some research on this because there's so much information. But be mindful because there's a lot of not necessarily wrong information, just... Conflicting. Conflicting and misinformed and slightly off information. Now, um, and the other thing to remember is HDR is not just for our world, it's also for the photography world. Yes. And HDR in the photography world is slightly different. Slightly. Well, it's very, very, very similar. In fact, a lot of the stuff is overlapping Translates. with us. Uh, but it's there still are slightly, slightly different. Some, some differences with There's it. some dialect changes. Okay, so we talked about what is SDR. Now, with that, I do want to talk about what HDR is not, because this is really important. This is something that I had to get over, was just the simple idea of, well, if I want HDR, I have to have 10-bit video, or 10-bit color, right? No. So that's what I had to get over. Now, we are going to do, be doing an episode, like Brent said earlier, on, uh, on color space and talking about 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit. So the difference is, is that technically you can have HDR metadata. Again, I said metadata, that being the key word, and we're going to talk about that. You can have HDR metadata on 8-bit. In fact, you can have HDR metadata all the way back down to the lower bits because, again, it doesn't even matter. Okay, it's what not resolution is the requirement for HDR? Oh, I did not know this. You're, you're throwing something on me now. What's this? There is none. There isn't. There isn't. Well, again, because it's not, it, you can have one pixel. Right. And, it could, and, and it just, absolutely. it's metadata for that one pixel. Yes. Right? Okay. So, so, and we were discussing this earlier, and you said you had read an article that said it was bunk, but. Yeah. Dolby Vision predates HDR by a number of years. Sim 2 had it, and it was in a couple of professional displays yeah. long before we saw it at a consumer level, and I'm talking CRT displays. Okay. So you could do HDR in CRT. You could do, H now HDR is very tough to do in projectors because you kind of got to fake that one. Uh, yeah, because there's, you, there is no true black right. when it comes to... Because it's a light to, bulb. Yeah, exactly. Lasers do improve that dramatically. Yeah, because they can do, of course, direct point uh, uh, portions of it, but you still get the, the bleeding effect off yes. of that. So. so back to your statement. So when we look at the 
HDR metadata and we look at the bit requirements, that's not really, they, those two don't correlate. They, they, they don't, they don't, well, you have, they here's what's happening. They walk side by side, yes. but they're not one person. Exactly. And so you can have uh, the, the development of both of those, the higher bit rates, or the higher bits re requirements, and bit rate actually is the correct term for that, right? Color depth. Color depth. The, 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 the increase of color depth and, and the information about that, as well as the increase of HDR. Uh, and the other thing is, is that I have to be careful because we have to define HDR, and we'll talk about that uh, in the next part. Um, but those two things are two separate things that developed together at, well, at roughly the same time. Not really. What version of HDMI introduced deep color? 1.4, wasn't it? And what changed between 1.4 and 1.3? It was the, the addition of deep color. It was electronic changes because 1.3 was the exact same physical characteristics right. for cabling right. as 1.4. So the bandwidth didn't change. They just now established you can Oh, we have deep color. They gave you no idea how to do deep color. They just said that you can do you, deep now color. Now you can do deep color. Oh, congratulations. Good luck. <laughs> um, congratulations. You were allowed to climb Mount Everest. You're not qualified to do <laughs> it, but do you can do it. You don't know how to do it. And so remember, that's why I'm saying deep color very much predates right. any version of HDR for the consumer. Right. The Dolby Vision HDR predates deep color. Right. So you got, depending on where you want to look in the industry, yeah, and is the answer. Yeah, so let's, let's do this. Let's go ahead and, and well, like I said, we're, we, we need to verify and tell everybody that the, the bit rate, so when someone says, oh, you have to have 10 bit in order to get HDR, technically they're wrong. In, in everyday use, they're not because in most cases, the things that have HDR are 10 bit based. Yes, and so, the content is. Yes, and so it's, it's easy to find, okay, hey, this, ha this has 10 bit color gamut, so more than likely it's going to have HDR. Now, 8 bit color gamut, it's not that they, it's impossible for it to have it, it's just that more than likely it will not have it. Um, so, now we get into the next part. Uh oh. Brent, are we ready for this one? We'll let it slide in here. What is HDR. Well, I can tell you what it stands for. Okay. What what does HDR stand for? High dynamic range. Okay. That I, that part I do know. That's pretty pretty straightforward, right? High dynamic range. But who the hell knows what that means? Uh, <laughs> apparently, a lot of really really extremely smart people uh, that talk in really really big words. Yes. Uh, There's a lot of math and, and involved lot of in math the articles. Involved with it. Um, as as a note, Adam will post the links that we use to research this. Uh, yeah. After this, because there's no way. In any way, shape, or form, we're going to be able to cover everything that's in these mm -hmm. these links because it's a tremendous amount of data. Uh, honestly, Wikipedia is your friend in a lot of this, but it's also your enemy because the the Wikipedia for SDR uh, information, the only thing that they really give you is kind of a uh, of a. It's not HDR. Over, yeah, exactly. It's not HDR, uh, but they they give you uh, this this really great mathematical equation in there for how it correlates to a gamma curve. Um, which and, is a which future is episode. Still, which is still part of HDR. It's just but, it's it's smushed down for an SDR image. So, what is HDR? HDR is the the fact that we now go from uh, the the limited six f stops. Maybe on a good day downhill. On, on a good day, right? And now we're increasing it up to uh, as high as in some cases sixteen stops. In theory. In theory. Now again, this and you're exactly so. Now, the other side of this that we have to understand is the fact that we are still limited as to uh, as to the brightness of the panels. So, HDR is this. So the the, the term HDR is is like saying that is a sedan, right? Well, the uh, let's pretend that the door is open and there's a sedan outside ah, the door. Okay, okay, okay. It's like saying okay, that's a sedan. Right? Okay, well, that may be a sedan, but is it a Ford? That's a is drink. it a Chevy? Is it a, you know, exactly. Yeah. So that's a drink. Well, is it a Coke? Is it a, is it a Pepsi? Is it yep. a, you know, whatever it is. 32 ounce, 16 ounce. And let's take it even further. Is it water or is it milk or is it this? And so here's the thing. When you look at, when someone says HDR, HDR covers all types of HDR. It like is, 4K did in the early days. Exactly. 4K, 4K. Yeah. So now it, when someone says 
4, uh, it's 4K, thank you. Um, uh, when someone says HDR, technically that's going to cover all types of HDR. So be mindful when you're going out there and you're specking out jobs with different products. If it just says HDR capable. Well, okay. Do you remember, do you know the brightness, the nit level of the very first HDR sets? So if we look at HDR 10, mm -hmm. which is what we would call just standard HDR, right? That is a thousand nits. No, 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 no. It is capable of a thousand ah, nits. Ah, see? Do you know the brightness of the original HDR televisions, the nit the, level? The, the physical panels themselves. Yes, they, no. what they were capable of. What were they of? capable of? 350. Okay, that's important. And but it was HDR, uh -huh. and honestly, for us, it was a oh my god, yeah, change because yeah. we went from around 100, yep, to 350. Oh my gosh, it's so bright! You are you're, you're stepping it up now by quite a bit, by three times the amount of brightness. And actually, it's because of doesn't math, quite it, work it, that way. It, it actually yes. increases more than that because of of how it that light adds up together. And the and gamma again, curve, a lot of math, a lot, a lot of math. Um, and so. That's actually really important what you what you brought up is that the fact that yes, HDR10 technically is capable of a thousand nits. However, find a panel that does a thousand nits back then, of course, when it was first launched. Now and we have wasn't. panels now we have panels that are that are doing much higher than that. Yes. Um, uh, not not by much, but a little bit higher well, than that. Well now, do you know why the thousand was originally picked? I do not actually. The industry standard for authoring you know to doing video mm -hmm. was a sony 32 inch professional panel that was expensive as all get out yeah it was a thousand nit panel so that was just the chosen because that that's was, what they that were using that was what everybody was using mm -hmm. now because that was everywhere now that has been replaced because nobody monitors on a nobody masters on a 32 inch anymore right you know now they're using oleds and these bright things but because that was the standard mm -hmm. and it was color correct Yep. Assuming it was recently ISF'd and all the stuff had been done correctly. Yep. That was the standard that everybody looked at. So when you you had 350s, 500s, 600s, six and a quarter knit televisions, and the idea of a thousand, yeah, was wow. Yeah, yeah, really, really bright. Now a thousand is just kind of. Yeah. So now let's talk about the fact that what is what is the maximum capabilities of HDR10 plus? Well, in theory. Right. 10,000 nits. Nope. 4,000 nits. 4, You're nits. right, because yes. it's Dolby Vision. That's right. That's 10,000 nits. Exactly. Now, this is important. But thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, that's really important for a couple reasons. So, when you look at, at the differences between HDR10, HDR10+, and, and Dolby Vision, the biggest differences that we have, other than the next thing that we'll get into, is how bright they are capable of. Now, this is really, really important for what you said before. And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to ask you to go that way because we are being social, uh, uh, socially uh, cognizant. cognizant and we are social distancing. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a top-down shot because we're going, to do some, uh, we're going to do some art today. We'll switch over to there. Okay, so here's Move what I want to show. Move the panel a little to your right. No, it, it, it covers it? all of it. Yep, okay. yep, it's centered. I'll make sure it stays focused in there. So when we look at a, uh, the capabilities of HDR10. Now I'm going to be I'm going to keep this pretty simple. So we've got a thousand nits, okay, and we've got zero nits down here. To be perfectly honest, unless you're using an OLED TV, you will not get zero nits. So technically, that doesn't exist. It does, but it doesn't. So we're going to use this here, at zero to a thousand. Now, for a, a normal gamma, or pardon me, a normal uh, color, uh, what is it, BT709? It's, it's uh, BT709. You've got a straight line. Well, that's the goal. That's, well, and there's a problem with that goal. And actually, there's, there's a really great video, and again, I'll, I'll make sure that it's posted in the information as well when we, when we bring it up. But the, the, what's really important with this line here is the simple fact that our human eyes, what we see is more like this. So it takes very little information. We'll, we'll call this line here the information level. It takes very little information for us to pick up the first 50% of this line. And so that means that down here at this darkness level, we see more information in the dark than we do in the light. So the problem that we run into is that with this line here, 
we are going to miss out on a lot of this brightness up here because, or pardon me, we're going to miss out on a lot of this darkness uh, down here because it leaves and escapes that level much quickly. So when it gets to this point, what we're going to see is a lot of uh, a little bit of light, a little bit of light, more light, more light, more light, too much light, too much light, too much light, and then way too much light. And what's going to happen is during this too much light, it's going to crush it. And that's a really good that's way to put it. That's the correct word. Right? I was going to, I was, you were waiting for me to, to use that, right? So it's going to crush all of this. And all this is here is going to clip our human eyes. So, and frequently the display. Exactly. So what you'll see is that you'll lose contrast once you hit this point. And so what will happen is that, in fact, I don't know if you all can see this or not. See right here where there's a reflection of the light. Let's see if I can mark it here. There's a reflection of the light that we're using right now. Now, on your screens, you'll see that this is kind of white. You know, it's almost like a bluish white. And then as it gets over here, right at the edge of that light, it's still blue. And then all of a sudden, it just goes pure white. And what you're seeing there is, is your phone or your, or your laptop or whatever device that you're watching on is actually being crushing that light and only showing you the white. Now, I can confirm to you that there are differences inside of that light that our human eyes can see. But and we have you know millions of years of, of, of evolution. Uh, evolution, thank you, to get us to the point where we can actually see that. However, if you don't want to use that word, adaptations. Adaptations uh, to get us to the point where we can we can actually see the differences there. So what we do instead is we use a gamma curve. Now the gamma curve, what happens? It actually is reverse of what our eyes can see. And this is this is what I learned. Remember earlier I was telling you that you know that that curve was backwards now, from what I was doing where research else do we on. We have a curve like this in our world. Uh, audio. It's the it, no, it's the HDMI equalization curve. Yes, yes. And so here's what's interesting. What we do instead is that we apply a curve down here. So we get this curve like this and it reverts over instead to look like that. So on this curve, I'll just write right there. Now, that. just so everybody knows, the right hand side is more gain than the left hand side. Yes. So what we see here is really great because we have more information in the dark down here that happens so that we, our eyes can actually see more information down here in the dark before it then begins to, to go up. So if we look at this here, our eyes see more of that information. So right in through here is what ours, our eyes will see. So that gives us a heck of a lot more information before we get to the point where we start getting that crushing effect of the white lights. Now, so, I, I took a tangent and I went down this road and I didn't mean to. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, this was something that I was going to save for the next episode of HDR because there is a lot of information, especially when it comes to gamma information. So, I, and I, But I apologize because this is really good information. I want to get it out there to you. But instead, what we are going to talk about is the fact that we have 0 to 1,000 nits. And I'm going to erase this information here because that is for next episode. We'll, we'll draw it again and we'll talk about it then. Um, so when we look at a thousand nits and zero nits, what we have from here, thank you very much. What we have from here is the fact that we have a TV that is only capable of, what do we say? 350 to 400. So 350 to 400 nits. And by the way, it's still called HDR. They don't define these numbers on the boxes. Right. So HDR, the, the, the governing body over HDR, they don't have the control, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. They don't have yeah, control of making body, sure. I like that. Now, here's what's great. That's where uh, Dolby Vision comes into play. So 400, 350 uh, nits. What we do with this now is we have this information going all the way up to 1,000 nits. But our TV is only capable of this information down here. So what that means is that the TV can display, actually, it's, it's more like, uh, the, again, there is, no, there is no zero nits on TVs. So it's usually, what is it, like like 10 nits or something like that at, at the lowest? I don't know. The, the, I, don't, I do not recall the bottom number you can see, but it's not really that low. I want to say it's like 5 to 10 nits. And so it's, it's, not, it's not super low or anything like that. So we're going to start there. So what has to happen then is that when the video is mastered, it says, okay, we have between 0 and 1,000 nits to work with. So that means the darkest blacks in that video are down here at 0, and the brightest whites of that video are all the way up here. Now what it has to do is it has to now take that information and say, okay, well, we're going to display that on a TV that only has 350 to 400 nits. So what it has to do is it, it's not going to say, well, anything above this line is now just garbage. We're just not going to use that. No, instead what it does is it takes this information, 
and it will reduce the entirety of this information so that it maps out, and actually mapping is the correct term for it, it maps it out to the line that it has to work with down below. So it's still working with the entirety of the, what the TV is capable of between, between its lowest point and its highest point. So anywhere between 5 and 10, five and ten nits all the way up to 400 nits on, on this particular TV. Some TVs are lower, some TVs are higher, but it takes that information and it EQs, maybe, is that the right word for that? Well, it reduces the range. Right. So in, let's say instead of your range being from 1 to 100, now your range is from 1 to 10. So 10, you know, it's kind of like 10 ours goes 100. to 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now 10 now is 100. 100 right. And 90 is now 9. Right. And 70 is now 7. Yeah, exactly. And that's a really good way to, to, to say that because we're just taking that, that line there. We're bringing it right down to the fact that we are now only limited to, or we are now limited to only 400 nits on, again, on this TV. So the differences in the HDR become less pronounced. Yes. However, they're still there. That's still HDR and it's still powerful. And so here's where the fun part of it comes in. At this 1,000 nits, uh, we have the capabilities of doing, uh, I believe at that level, I think it's something like 10 or 12 stops uh, at, at 1,000 nits, if I remember correctly. So we have a full, uh, let's, let, we're, we're going to use 10 stops, 10 f-stops at 10. And we have, of course, zero f-stops, meaning that we're at, at just, just zero. All black. All black. So we still have all of this, and the thing is, is that the f-stops are a constant. Those don't change. So the difference is, is that now we are decreasing this from 1,000 to 400. So you can add the easiest way to say this is that we are now at four f-stops. It's not technically four f-stops. It's some other number. I can't remember which one it is, but we're going to pretend. So we're now taking that information, and we're now cramming it down inside of those remaining f-stops down at that level. So... When you look at, and Brent, you can actually come back on screen because I think I'm done with that there. When you look at the, the fact that we now have to compress all that information down from what it's capable of, because again, you can have TVs like today that are at a thousand nits or more, or more and they can now do a full HDR image and they look fantastic. Well, now, and here's the other thing to remember. You mentioned OLED earlier. Yes. The advantage of an OLED is it can go much lower. Yes. Consequently, it doesn't have to go as high. Yes. Because of the perceived difference. Exactly. And if you have a set that can't go as low, yep. it has to go higher yeah. to get the same advantage. And that's where sheer numbers, just looking at a number, don't tell the story. Right. Take, take some time. Uh, go to uh, other dealers in the area, go over to some of the big box stores that have televisions and whatnot that have like an HDR showcase of some kind uh, and experience it. Now remember, of course, those showcases are going to be skewed in certain ways because of manufacturers and how they do their showings um, and whatnot. So. The, the best answer I can give you is the King of TV shootout, mm -hmm. which sadly because of COVID this year has not happened. Right. But it is an unbiased, yep. and I can promise you that it is. Yep. IS, everything's ISF, and what they're judging, they're not judging walking in, taking a TV off a shelf. Right. They're not judging, can I live with it with my kids watching Blue's Clues? Right. What they're judging is which one absolutely has the best picture. Yeah. Which one has the least black crush? Yeah. Which one has the best brightness scaling? Yep. Those are the things that they look at. Yeah. Now, does this always relate to the real world? No, not entirely. Yeah. But if you've got the customer, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of like watching Top Gear. You know, you're never going to buy a Veyron. Yeah, right. But it's great information that can relate downstream. Right. You know, race on Sunday, sell on Monday. Right. Yep, whatever wins on Sunday, win, uh, sells yeah. on Monday. The and it's, it's absolutely true. And it does affect what you see in the real world. Yes. So... Some of the other things that we need to talk about when it comes to HDR is, uh, again, how does it work? Well, let's talk about metadata. Because yeah. people tend to think of HDR as high-speed data. It's part of the, the RGB or it's part of the TMDS or FRL feeds. Right. And it's not. Yeah. No. It's, it's that album art that pops up on your CarPlay screen. Yep. That's metadata. Yeah. It's not the audio. It's not the video. So... 
and this is a really great way to describe it, the, the way that, that you were talking about there. It is the metadata. So for anybody else who uh, in their previous life may have been a uh, uh, certain person that would find uh, music in a... Napster, in, Nutella, in a, in a certain and Rockster. Not so... Legal? Gray area fashion. You understand the idea of metadata because at that point it would come down and it may just be garbled up and somebody else would put information in there about, you know, their website that has, you know, porn or something on it. I don't know. But um, with that, it, they'll, they'll put like, links know to what certain you're doing things. Nice. I'm just saying you run into some weird things out there. Uh, don't do illegal things, people. Um, so when the metadata comes in. Is that in, your PSA for the day? Uh, yes. So when you uh, stay in school, don't do illegal things, <laughs> I guess. Uh, turn off CEC. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't cut your wires too short, but we're not ready for that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, where was I? Metadata. So when you look at the metadata for, an, uh, for a... HDR. For, well, not, not, not for HDR, for music. Okay. Okay. So we have in that metadata for that, P, that track, right? Mm -hmm. We have the track name. Yep. We have the time on the track, like how long is yep. the song? We have the artist. Yep. We have the maybe album. the album. Yep. And from there, we will have also, depending on if it's an if it's a lossless uh, media file or if it's a compressed MP3 or something like that, it'll tell us what kind of re what kind of uh, sample rate it has on it, right? And a couple other things as well. It may even have some added descriptions in there about you know some history of the yeah, album when it was or whatever made it was. and uh, yeah. Library of Congress number things like that. So the important part of that is the sample rate. Right? That's probably the easiest way for us to correlate between Kind of an idiot thing. You have to know what you're connecting to. Exactly. So at that point, what it does is that your player would actually read the metadata for that sample rate and be able to say, oh, okay, I can play that back at that rate. Or it can't and you get some weird garbled mess and or you just don't get anything. Which correlates, again, back to HDR. HDR is metadata. So let's use HDR 10. So what channels does it travel on? Uh, it travels on the on the low speed. It travels on the, on the EDID channel. Yeah, exactly. Or the 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 D -D -C. D -D -C. Uh, Yeah, the DDC. So when you look at it, it's not necessarily per bit of information that's being transmitted to the TV for the actual picture because that is part of the uh, the TMDS lines, the FRL, uh, the actual the high picture, speed the data. high speed data. It's actually low speed data because we're just telling the display, hey. We are this this uh, video that you're that we're putting out there has HDR HDR 10. We're gonna we're gonna limit ourselves right now for for explaining it. It has HDR 10, uh, and we mastered this to have the highest point in this movie at a thousand nits and the lowest point in this movie at at zero nits. So then the TV says, "Oh, great! I will take that information. I will apply it to my own range that I am capable of doing." And what I drew was actually incorrect a little bit because. The TV, instead of it being a, a straight line from zero, uh, for, from five or ten up to like four hundred nits, it's actually a little bit of a curve because it curves itself for what it's capable of doing. For you old guys, it's it's the video loudness curve. Exactly. Yeah. It's a it, it's a it's a loudness that loud button on the, on the old radios and whatnot. You and I had just had this discussion mm -hmm. earlier. You had you no idea me. what I was talking about. Well, I about. knew what the button was. I just didn't know what it did. And so it was really great information. So the TV will say, Yeah, okay, I'll take that information. And it then maps that information down to its level, again, with its own curve. And it says, okay, then I'll play that back. And now I'm playing it. So here's the thing. All it, that the metadata is doing is telling the TV what the brightest point is in the movie and what the lowest point and the is average. in the movie. And the, the overall average. And the overall average. Exactly. So then the TV is able to take that information, put it up on the screen, and it looks great, right? You get, and when you, when you, but okay, we'll, we'll do this. When you first went from watching something that was high def, let's, you know, let's, let's do a 4K display of some kind, it looked great, right? And then they took that same thing and gave you a side by side and showed you an HDR version of whatever it is you're that watching. HDR, to me, was the biggest change, bigger than 4K. You actually tell a great story about this on uh, the Panas, uh, not Panasonic, um, um, Elite, Pioneer, Pioneer Elite, the Pioneer Elite. Yes. So tell tell that story again because this is really great. Okay, three or four years ago. And actually, before you go too far, hold on, hold, hold that thought. Everybody, thank you for watching. If you have questions about what we're talking about today, make sure you put it over in the chat section over here. If you have questions or comments after the fact and you're watching this after it's been recorded, you can put it down in the comment section below. We do monitor those and, and track those. Uh, and if you have something to say, we want to hear it from you. Like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Uh, it lets us know that we're doing a good job for you. And from there, I'm going to hand it back over to Brent so he can tell the story. Okay. 
five years ago in New York for the TV shootout, yep. King and TV shootout. Right. And this was very early in HDR. Right. In fact, this was very early in 4K. Yeah. In fact, the only device that we could get to actually do 4K matrixing mm -hmm. was a handmade matrix. Ah. Just for this application. So sure. we had an LG OLED, a Sony OLED. That was like brand new. It was o brand OLED new. Was like the Z series was not out yet. Yep. A Samsung, a Vizio, and I think maybe a Westinghouse. Okay. And a Pioneer 60 inch Elite. Now, the 60 inch Elite was there simply to show here's where we were. Now, this Elite was ISF to within an inch of its life. I mean, it was stunning. Yeah. And up until, you know, we're watching a variety of things, we're watching. Uh, the ISF swing, you know, where you see the hammock go back and forth looking for motion. Yep. We're watching color bars. We're watching brightness bars. And to be honest with you, all the way through this, the Pioneer was still kicking everybody's butt. Yep. Until <clears throat> they put on the Kingsman and turned HDR on. Yeah. When they turned HDR on, what we saw then yep. was such a dramatic change over what we had seen a minute before. On a Pioneer 1080. On a Pioneer 1080 60-inch Elite. Yep. As good as it ever got. Yep. ISF by some of the best in America. Yep. Suddenly, it was just kind of, eh. Yep. Now, it's not that the other TVs were better. Yep. It's what HDR did to the other TVs. Yes. Because now we have a much wider gamut of brightness. Yes. Now, and as you alluded to earlier, deep color typically comes along with HDR. Yes. It just happens, you know, if you got one, you generally have the other. It's not mandatory. It's not part of. Yep. But it is there. So when that HDR turned on, when they went into enhanced mode, everything we knew about TVs and what made a picture correct was completely gone. out the door, right? Gone. Yeah. And that more than 4K, more than 8K, more than all that other resolution hyperbole, mm -hmm. that was the biggest change in video I've seen in my entire life with the exception of the introduction of color. Yep. Yep. And I'm old enough to remember. When it was color. When it was, when, when when it was, it was not. black and white. Yeah, when it was not. And when, it, when they made that jump over to so, it. So had I watched Star Trek in 1968 in HDR... Oh my God. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So when we, there is so much information and that's why we're breaking this up into two parts because what we're going over now really is just the basic information for it. And I really need to do more research on it myself to get good information out to you out in the field because there is a lot to talk about. Now we talked about what is HDR 10. So now we need to talk about what is HDR 10 well, plus. Before we get there. Oh, you got something else. Oh, yeah, because before you get to 10+, plus, we really need to talk about the types of metadata. Types of metadata. Yes. So you did more research than I did. Well, you sent me the link. I, I read it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We're going to start with basic HDR. Now, and, and I'm asking this here on the spot. And when they added sound, when they added you know, sound. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, you realize this is video and I cannot share my thoughts with you right now. He was there. But you are number you. one. I bet you. I bet you. I bet you that he was there when Disney did their their stereoscopic setup, where they broadcast the right channel on the on the, the on the AM station, and then you could put the the TV on the left channel for for its own station over there. I bet you he was around for that one. Come on. Are you done? Uh, I well, no. no. I'll never be done. No. I'll never be done. <laughs> This is fun. We have fun. Uh, wow. So, uh, with that. Yes. <laughs> you were there, weren't you? Yes. You remember that, dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, let us know in the in the comments. What would you guys think I'm about doing I'm going to share something a, with you later, too. Uh -huh. Let us know in the comments. What would you all think about doing a story time with Brent? Uh, I, I, and I had this thought about a year ago when we were doing this and we had done it for, for a little while and, and thought, what if, what, if we, what if we did like a story time with Brent? Because you've got some really good stories. Let me know down in, down in the comments. Let me know over here in the chat what you all think about the idea of doing a story time with Brent where you can actually have an opportunity uh, to tell us youngins. Uh, what kind of stuff in the AV industry, the AV world, you realize that came that before. I'm a young kid in the AV industry? Oh, I understand. Oh, I understand. There are people yeah. that are still working uh -huh. that make me a child? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. 
So you know, just Lawrence and Fred and <laughs> Lori Fincham and here you're Chris, putting, you know, Carrie Christie. You're, you're calling out and, some people, I'm aren't all you? Under the bus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and, and okay, so going back to what you were talking about, the different types. Now, before you go into the different types, my my question to you is: Would it be better for us to dive into that on the next episode? Well, before you get it to HR to HDR 10 plus. Sure. And because you already mentioned metadata. Yep. Okay. Let's I do think it. we had to cover it. All right. Let's cover it. So let's talk about what we've had to date. All right. Because we're talking about how excited we were and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it's static. Yes. And we did not understand that at the beginning. I mean, we may have seen the word. Right. But we didn't get what it meant. Now, and you and I were discussing this earlier because we're both seeing things slightly differently with what we're reading. Yep. So with static metadata, and as you mentioned, there's a high point, yep. there's a low point, and there's an average point, and that covers the entire film. Yep. That's Everything it, you're watching. start to finish. Yep. Regardless of the scene, regardless of the effects on this, the scene, mm -hmm. that's it. So for example, if we are panning, and one of the, by the way, one of the issues we have in this room is that corner right behind him, trying to get it to light up correctly has been very hard. Yeah. I mean, we've done all sorts of shenanigans to Fix well, it, and we haven't. It's black, and well, there's black wires. Well, basically, you just suck all the light uh, out of the pretty room. Pretty much, yeah. That kind of, so if we were to pan the to. camera around mm -hmm. and hit that spot right there and keep going, mm -hmm. we have HDR, and we're going to see this as nice, bright whites. Right. But we're going to get to that area, and we've already set, here's our, here's our brightest white, mm -hmm. and there's our lowest and an average, but it's not going to look as good as it could. Right. It's not going to get as dark because we do have the brightness here. Right. Now, it still looks a hell of a lot better than it did yep. on 100 nits. Yep. Which is, you know, if you're watching YouTube on your laptop. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, actually, right, right about that for, for laptops is yep. usually about the brightnesses. Maybe, maybe 100 to 200, somewhere around in there. Um, so our natural eyes, and, th and that plays into this, because our natural eyes will use the f-stops of our irises to open and close well, depending on what we're looking at. So if I'm looking at this area here, and actually it's better for me to look this direction because I've got these bright lights that and are shining And they are very me. bright. Now, the difference is, is that if I were to take a camera over to this side, set my f-stop in a, an average between the brightest of those lights and the darkest of the shadows that are actually down here on the little cart that I have back there, uh, the, the problem that we would have is that those lights would begin to crush mm -hmm. at that high point and, and those darks would begin to crush at that low point and the problem is is that you can't see that now if i were to look up at the lights i'm not going to because i don't want any light spots on uh, on my eyes i would be able to see more of those whites and i'd be able to see less of the darks down below because of the simple fact that my eye is actively closing down the iris to make sure i don't take in too much light but again, if I look down at the darker spots, it's going to open up a little bit more and allow in more light because I'm looking at a darker area. So when we look at the static image, it's like having just a camera to a set F stop. Yep. Right? It, or it's it's now, averaging it out between the it's two. It's averaging out. The, the TV's greater, the content's greater, and the TV is extrapolating mm -hmm. based, but it doesn't change from scene to scene or shot to shot. Right. So... If you have a dark movie, like a Batman movie, something like that, it is not quite as capable of changing from a dark scene to a bright scene right. as we would like it to be. It's still a heck of a lot better than we ever had yep. in the old days, but it's not where we want to go. And it's particularly as we go toward a uh, 2020 color mm -hmm. space, it is definitely not ready. Yeah. And... The biggest change going forward, and this is going to be in our next episode as we go to HDMI 2.1, yep. is going to be, they officially call it dynamic HDR. Yes. But it's trademarked as HDR 10 plus. Yes. Now, technically, dynamic HDR incorporates both HDR 10 plus and Dolby Vision because those are both dynamic HDR right. standards. But that's an HDMI standard, not an HDR standard. HDR is separate from Dolby Vision uh, tr as, true. from a branding standpoint. True. Dynamic <clears throat> HDR just means that you can now, instead of having a fixed, and we will go much greater depth into this next yeah, week. Yeah. Instead of having <clears throat> a fixed value for the whole movie. Yep. We can, if we have an indoor scene, it can have a value. Yep. If we have an outdoor scene, it can have a value. You go from being up in the mountains with the snow caps all the way down to being inside of the sewers of the city. 
you can have completely different dynamic Now, this range. means a number of things had to change. Mm -hmm. First off, when you looked at a traditional HDR movie, I say traditional meaning in the last four years. Right. Right. They would look at it and they would have to go through each scene of the movie for the, for the actual movie movie. Yep. And adjust the brightness and adjust the HDR value. Now, this is for the master. This, this is isn't for the for master. The, the production right, release Right, this is the it. master. Right. So they would have to go through each frame of the movie and decide where do I want it brightened or lowered. Yep. Because that was done post-production. Yep. And HDR still, we could do HDR here if we had the correct monitor for grading. Yep. We don't. Correct. And we're sure aren't going to try to do it live. No. No. And that's next week too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And actually not to brush over that, um, you, the, we're, we are getting to the point where we do have to go ahead and, and wrap this up everybody. Um, but what you were talking about of course is HLG and actually... HLG is probably a really good thing to talk about with just regular HDR10. Because it's already functioning. Yeah, because and it's already functioning. And of all it's the HDRs, here. it's the shortest one of the bunch. It, it really is. And, and actually, just to cover it really quickly, uh, HLG... What does it stand for? Uh, uh, hybrid Log Gamma. Uh, and so, yeah, right? Hybrid Log Gamma, uh, L-O-G. And so, what uh, which HLG basically is, is that it's HDR for live television. It's so an that's auto... the most basic way to do yeah. it, right? And it does not offer the frame-to-frame -frame adjustment, right. which you're not going to really use in broadcast anyway. No. And even movies that, when we see a movie on video versus seeing it in a theater, right. the dynamic range is not as great. Exactly. So what they'll do is they'll go to, say, like a, like a football game, uh, and whoever is, uh, is engineering the, the, the video for the football game will do their white balance on, on, uh, out in the field, and they'll say, okay, great. So for HLG, I have this range here, and they just type, you know, type it into the in, and we the think we're going to avail, we're going to offer a net availability of this to this. Yep, exactly. And then it just automatically averages from there, and they don't have to look at anything. So the really cool thing about HLG is that it was actually started by two uh, two broadcast companies, B the BBC o over in the UK, as well as uh, HJK or JHK or NH. It's uh, you're talking about Japan. Yeah. NHK? It's NHK. NHK. They, it was Which also originally developed high definition television. Yes. It was co-developed by, by the two of them uh, to for broadcast purposes because they, they wanted to have for the Olympics. HDR for the, for the Olympics. Now, of course, unfortunately, it didn't happen because it got pushed back and all that kind of good stuff. So, and AK. HLG, yes. HLG. Um, what's interesting about HLG, and there's a lot more to research on this, but it, it, what's neat about it is there is no metadata. With HLG. It's just a fixed value. It's just a fixed value. And so that's how they're able to do it for, for live broadcast because they can go ahead and just send a fixed value out. The TV well, the will TV's pick up on it. already got it. Exactly. The TV will pick up on it and say, oh, oh, you give me this much information, great, I'll there's use it. Day, there's a flag trip and you're done. Yeah. Now, it, the also really cool thing about HLG is the fact that it is still doing SDR at the same time so that TVs that don't have HLG or HDR, they can still broadcast and still look okay the way that it's supposed to. The TV just, if it gets the flag, it knows to do this. To I don't even know if it's a flag. I think it's it a flag. Even, is it a flag? Yeah. I'll have to look at it again because they, they, they were saying that it, they, it, there was no metadata for it, uh, the, the HLG no, there's, stuff. There's still, a, there's still a carrier to trip a flag in it so it knows to do it. Sure. So everybody, that, not complex, just there. There is a, the, you can tell we are already at an hour uh, almost. We're at at, uh, at 50, uh, 54 minutes with this. So um, really, thank you. yeah. Oh man, it, it's been a lot of information. I was looking at the. I was thinking we're like thirty minutes. Oh yeah, no, no, we are. We're we, we've been recording for an hour. Um, so with that, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video today. Uh, come back, not next week, because next week we are off. Or we are taking the week off for Christmas. Uh, and that's, of course, why I we have today's episode. Just simply, he's lazy. Uh, it, Rudolph, uh, the red-nosed reindeer. Um, so we will be back the week after Christmas uh, on for Wednesday. Two. For part two. It'll be the 30th. Uh, and then the first of the year, we're going to be doing gamma and color depth. Yep. And there's a lot of math in that one. I started sharing the math with him today. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on with that. So everybody, thank you again for checking out, uh, checking into our video today. As always, a like, a share, and a subscribe is always helpful. Give it, uh, give us a thumbs up on that. Hit that little bell notification. Uh, it should be over here somewhere, I believe. Um, hit that little bell on on that to let you know when we do go live, which is of course every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Except, except next week. for next week and Thanksgiving and all that kind of good stuff. Um, with that, as, uh, as always, they can share out uh, the information out to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, um, all the other the places. And by the way, you can also, you can find us typically on RC and IP. Yep. Um, for those of you that checked on our uh, Spyclops update bulletin on RC this week. Yes. 150 plus, thank you very much. Yep. 
Um, same on IP. We appreciate the uh, yep. fact that you guys check on us and our Facebook. So with that, everybody, thank you for checking in with today's episode. We will see you two weeks from now, and we'll, we'll be talking about HDR, the, uh, the second part. 10 plus. 10 plus. Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision. And Dolby Vision's a really interesting take on this. Yes. And it's a whole different level of math. Yes, it is. And because the, it is capable of 12-bit. Yes. And that's, yes, it's capable of 12-bit. It doesn't need 12-bit, but it's capable, capable of 12-bit. Plus, it has two profiles that aren't always compatible. We're, we're, we're getting too far into it. Everybody, thank you so much for watching today's episode. We will see you all next time. As always, do not forget, uh, you can contact me at 386-492-8584. That's our tech support line here. You can 866-839-9187, extension 2203. And it follows my cell phone. Yes, it does. So, everybody, thank you for checking in with today's episode. As always, I... I uh, what's our what's our sign out? Um, reboot early. Reboot often. Don't cut your wires too short. Turn off CEC. And call tech support. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. Thank you. We'll see you all next time.